okay. uh, excellent. And then we've got a, a Nikki Klein, who I've actually spoken to a number of times, but I don't think we've ever actually uh, seen each other. Uh, 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 Nikki Klein holds a dear place in my heart in that I have never been happier to watch a character get shoved out of an airlock in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, why don't you tell us Luckily, a little bit? Luckily, I don't take it personally. Uh, you know, <laughs> honestly, if there were an Academy Award for getting shoved out of an airlock, <laughs> I, would, I, would nominate, I would nominate you in a moment. Why don't you tell us about who you are, how you got into uh, Nexium, and how we ended up here today. Uh, this conversation wouldn't be happening if it weren't for... Um, uh, me watching Scott Adams uh, interview Nikki and going, yeah, no, I know this thing is bullshit and I want to see what I can do to help. So uh, I'll, I'll hand it to you for a minute here and uh, uh, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So my name is Nikki Klein. I started my career as an actor. I was on the TV show Battlestar Galactica. I played Callie and um, yeah, Tr Troy was not a fan, which... You know, I'll just take as a as a compliment to my acting ability because we've since become friends. So I uh, I started taking classes with executive success programs in 2005. So I um, I enjoyed them. I found them really transformative and enlightening, and you know, just gained a lot of insight into my own process and and became more clear on what I really wanted to do. Um, not just what I thought I should do or what I could do, but really uh, more clarity about what I wanted, what my values were. And the amazing thing is, is they have these tools that help you make choices that are more consistent with, with your higher values and overcome limiting beliefs. As Mark said, he was able to overcome his Tourette's, which I think is just a very uh, tangible, obviously visible kind of, um, you know, limitation that some people have, but we all have our own form of Tourette's, if you will, you know, impulses, habits, patterns that might get in our way. And the tools that ESP offered were really profound in being able to um, understand what those are and overcome them. Uh, I, over the years, I also co-founded a media company that analyzed news. It was called The Knife Media. And um, it was doing quite well and getting attention by people like Elon Musk and, uh, you know, other people on, on Twitter who have quite a bit of influence. Unfortunately, when this whole Nexium is a sex cult story came out in the news, all the companies under the Nexium umbrella that were really just... Uh, the consistency was was the people and and the principles of bringing integrity, ethics, um, self awareness to different parts of our lives, and um, so a lot of things got destroyed when this narrative came out in the news. And when when it first started, we were quite naive in thinking this was just a PR problem. You know, we, we sat around being like, OK, well, should we say anything? Maybe it'll just pass. You know, sometimes what's in the news one day is out the next. And obviously that was not the case. The, the people who are very negative um, about either their experience in Nexium or against the people, the leadership in it, um, they were quite committed to destroying it and to destroying the lives of the people in it and who started it. And it's very sad because it was an incredible community program, helped a lot of people, but the, the lies that they spread and the fear that they were able to instill in, in people who were either part of it or, or outside of it, it manifested in this narrative that snowballed out of control and eventually led to a criminal investigation and criminal indictments. So the last five, four or five years have been a crash course for me in the criminal justice system. Uh, I, I'm not sure who everyone else is on the call, if there are lawyers. Um, I, I didn't know it worked this way. Let me just say that. I, I didn't, I really thought we had a system of justice that due process was a thing in this country. I did not realize how political, how 
motivated by winning and um, personal agenda, the whole system is, and just how easily people can get railroaded, even when it has all this media attention. Like, of course, you think that, you know, someone who has no money to hire lawyers, someone who, you know, maybe it just gets lost in the system can easily get railroaded. But but this happens in plain sight. And no one cares. Because if you stir up enough hate in the media, as as we've seen in our case, and surely others as well, then people, people stop critically thinking, people stop caring about rights, they just want to see people punished. And I think it it's a very deep social and societal issue. And um, our case specifically, something that Troy and I have been have talked a lot about is, is where women's agency falls in all of this and how this idea of, of women's empowerment that seeks to burn men at the stake is very disempowering in reality. And the infantilization of women is, is really not helping move our cause forward or help women be taken seriously. So that's a major theme and something that I try to speak to a lot. And I hope that our case, as we bring more of the truth to light, can can help with because uh, it's, it's a problem.